I've called my talk, The Robots Are Coming, Look Busy. <laughs> <laughs> because I believe we are at a pivotal time in our history of work where we still have chance to choose how we best integrate some of the amazing developments in tech that we're seeing. So from my professional perspective as a workplace learning and development consultant, one of the dilemmas I'm facing at the moment is how do we best tool up today's workforce to then have happy and healthy work experience opportunities ahead of them? As a mother to a four-year-old, what should I be doing as a parent to best set up my child to then have happy and healthy work experiences ahead of her. So I've become fascinated in robots and artificial intelligence, and in particular, the impact that robots and AI will have on the workplace of the future. At the moment, I, I observe that the dialogue uh, surrounding us at the moment, there's a lot of intensity kind of building up about robots and AI, is it's a very binary perspective that is being painted to us. Robots and artificial intelligence uh, in, the, in our work is either going to lead us towards this kind of heaven utopia or this kind of hell dystopia. But I think there's a risk by looking at it so binary. It seems too out there. It disempowers us from being able to take some action right now because today's preschoolers will be entering into the workforce in the year 2030. So the future is happening right now. But us humans are phenomenal at surviving, adapting, and thriving to our environmental changes. I just think that today's workforce might have to do it quicker and speedier than any of our previous <coughs> generations. So if we have a look at some of the developments that are out there at the moment, robotics has already decimated the work the number of people employed in factories and manufacturing and jobs that revolve around things. The key difference between robotics and artificial intelligence is artificial intelligence, rather than replacing our arms and legs in the task that we're doing, AI is looking to have the capability to do some of those cognitive, intelligent tasks that up until now, with the opportunities afforded to us by the cloud, would have been uniquely the preserve of humans. So I believe we are at a pivotal point in our history of work to be able to make some intelligent choices about how best to integrate. We've got the humans and made of carbon and we're organic and we're all alive on this side. And we've got the computers and the AI and the apps that are silicon based on this side. And I think we've got a chance to still choose how we best kind of integrate those to create what I call a silicon carbon symbiosis. So like in any ecosystem, how can we integrate with other in a way that means that we thrive? So I think there's opportunity for us to, as current job holders, we have a duty to the generations who will follow in our footsteps to do what we can to um, wake up and smell the silicon, I call it, and have a think about what is it that we do that then we can use robots and AI to help us so that we then have this healthy symbiotic relationship. Like entering into any new relationship, you'd want it to be mutually beneficial. But we've got to be really clear on what is it we, we, we stand for now. So I see that there are two major responsibilities that we have as today's current workforce. Number one, amid all this fear, I think there's because this sort of latent fear that um, robots are going to take over our jobs. But my, my response to that is the robots will only take over if us humans switch off. So our first responsibility is to really switch on to what is the unique, inimitable human essence of the jobs that we do now, home life and work life, of the professions and the workplaces that we have now, what are the unique human life bits that are brought to those roles, those professions and those workplaces. And the quicker we can distill that, the wiser we can make our choices around technology to build around that rather than replace that. So it's about thinking, what is it that we do that a robot could not? Now, I googled this question 12 months ago, <laughs> and not much came up. 
So I kind of saw that as a bit of a dare, really, is to set myself on a 12-month journey of, OK, well, I work in workplace learning development. I'm a mother to a young child. What, what should I be doing in terms of kind of, you know, having an intelligent look at the skills that are going to enable myself and my friends and her to have, you know, really great work life ahead of her? Because the thing about work, you see, is I don't know about you, but if I reflect back on my life to date, some of the funniest moments, some of the bestest mates that I have gathered in my life so far have come as a result of work. And actually, when you ask people who are long serving in their organisations, what's kept you here? What do you think the most common response is? The people. It's the people that keep you there. And the thing about AI is it won't be a robot sitting next to you having a chat <laughs> about how you're going to schedule the meeting. It'll be a little invisible, silent piece of AI. And I just feel quite sad when I think about the workplace of 2030 being silent and there being less people in there. And that's why I think we have an opportunity right now to have a think about how best are we going to work this. Not only in our day-to-day -day app downloads, but in uh, positions maybe of leaders. How do we best kind of build around? OK, so I set out on a 12-month mission. What is it that humans bring to a job that it would be very difficult to apply an algorithm to? So to me, that's where it would be a smart thing. The key difference between a robot and a human is we're alive. They are not. So what are those living behaviours, those choices in the moment? And I've arrived at what I call the four C's. So the moment in a shift or a job or a set of responsibilities, home life, work life, where a human chooses to be caring, <coughs> collaborative, curious, creative, are probably the four moments where you are adding the optimum human value that you can. Because the choice to care, to genuinely collaborate, to have a hungry brain and be curious, to, uh, to be creative and think of something that has not existed yet, are choices in that moment. And because by very nature those behaviours defy pattern, they're incredibly difficult to algorithm, therefore elements of a role that have caring, collaboration, curiosity and creativity built in as the core part of that role are less likely to be at risk of automation. So what can we be doing right now to highlight less of the doing of a job? Because there's enormous, uh, amazing advances in tech. The work will be less about doing and it will be more about being. And those moments where we are being caring, collaborative, curious and creative are likely to be the way you are being at your highest of, of human value. Therefore, our tech decisions should be based around supporting us being able to do more caring, collaboration, curiosity and creativity. So, as we ditch the competency frameworks <laughs> and we have a look more at personality, because a lot of the aim of using cloud data is about being able to create a personalised service, well, it, 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 life work will become more about personality and the way we are being at work. So where the first responsibility I think we have now as current job holders is to very quickly work out what's the human element and then we can preserve, we, we can build around that and we can have technology that supports us in with that. I think the second responsibility we have is how we role model what work is. Because I really hope my child is not any busier than I am in the year 2030. Because I'm not quite sure how she'd be able to fit any more in. I don't know about you. So I think we have a responsibility to look at how do we role model work. And how much are we getting busy just to look valuable. Um, because more and more of that busyness is, is, is potentially going to be automated. So what can we do with that time instead? So picture the scene. Five years ago, if you were responsible for the administration of a senior team and you wanted to get 25 of that board all together in the same place in the world, same time, that would have taken weeks, days, possibly months to have been able to get all of that together and line it up so 25 people in the same place, same time zone in the world. Now that could be done with an app in, what, under five minutes? So what else is that human able to be now to enable the efficiencies that tech has brought so that those people in the meeting can be more productive? So let's have a look at how we are looking at in terms of how we are being at work right now. So I look around me and I see this sort of irony. And I see there's an irony that's happening. Where we've got this amazing smart technology is less able to switch off from work. And by being able to switch off from work, I think it's turned us into the robots. And I think that many people are feeling trapped in the eat, sleep, work, repeat 
relentless pattern, or if you've got kids in school, eat, sleep, homework, repeat, <laughs> relentless pattern, which then makes us robotic in the way we uh, uh, kind of handle work. And of course, here's where I think that already becomes sad. The more robotic someone is in a service position, the, the, the more the appetite to automate that service position. And that's where I think we just need to kind of pause right now and think, how can we integrate tech that enables us to be more human in, in, our, in our role? So whether we think that the future is uh, the kind of the future where you know, robots are, are, are amongst us, et cetera, is 10, 15, 20 years away, whatever the time scale, what is pretty certain is we're entering into a really quick period of transition. And so my final call to action is to have a think about, well, what are the skills, the human skills that are going to enable us to handle this period of transition together so that we are able to do this in a way that is of benefit to us? And I call these the three human skills. So the three human skills are emotional intelligence. So no one can read emotions quite like a human because we're same species. So we need to be really fine-tuning our emotional intelligence, how we use social and emotional skills to read emotional information around us and be emotionally in charge of ourselves. The second is, is looking at really practicing our personal resilience. So our ability to withstand, tolerate pressure, deal with life as a human with all its ups and downs, and be able to emerge from life's uh, disruptions stronger and wiser and more able to put that learning into practice. And then the third, then, is mental presence. And I think this third one is one of the trickiest ones, given all the distraction. The skill to be able to focus all of our beautiful brain on a particular task, tapping into vision and imagination. Belly buttons and imagination are pretty much the two unique aspects of humans and robots. Uh, and then tapping into that gut feel and that intuition to be able to be in charge of ourselves in that moment. So the robots are coming, look busy, but not so busy, we miss this particular point in our history of work about how we make decisions about how we best create a symbiosis, a carbon-silicon sim symbiosis with the way we use our technology. And whether you are currently in work or you have uh, uh, children, your family, who will be entering into the workplace, these are decisions, whether it be the bedroom or the boardroom, the dining table or the meeting table, where we can really take on the responsibility of evolving our workplaces. Because robots are awesome. With the right intelligent decisions, they really can help us be even more phenomenal. And I, th I think that's an idea worth sharing. So thank you.